Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Straight away we are going into a fight and I'll try to change their oh, places. You. Easter, Revenant, Skeleton, Uma Skeleton. Okay, let's start with with this. You. Come on, take deep breaths. Please take deep breaths. Come on, come on great. Great. All three of you attack this one. Okay, it's going fairly well. Man. I can do. You did well enough. Really? No other land has such a wild and bloody recent history. From colony to palatinate to free republic, the Deerwood has undergone a trial by fire to emerge as a powerful force of the Eastern Reach. Deerwood's history actually begins in Adir in 2602 AI. A Adir explorers returned from a journey across the ocean with tales of the treasures they would find. They would discover countless ruins scattered through the forests, as well as plains to the north of the trees that would be perfect for growing warlocks. There was a problem, however. The locals were hostile and there was potential for conflict. The Ferklin of Adir, first king, knew that this was too good an opportunity to pass up and sent more explorers to scout and map the area. Exploration continued over the next 20 years. Small groups of explorers traveled back and forth between Adir and his new world, with a handful of colonists setting up small camps to establish a base for the explorers to work out of. Conflicts with the locals, who the Erdarians learned are called the Glaphetans, were rare but frequent enough for the Ferconin to send a small squadron of guards to help protect his citizens. These guards established a central base on a river in the western section of the woods. This settlement would eventually become the city of Deerford, upon which the modern-day village of the same name is presently built. Once that base was established, the first permanent Adirian settlements began, began north and west of the river, the Bale River. Over the next few years, thousands of Adarians made the trek from Adar to this new land. The Glanfadans, who seemed to revere the ruins scattered through the forest, caused a few problems with some of the settlements, especially those founded near the ruins themselves. These were easily taken care of by the colonists, with the help of the Imperial Guard. The Adarians, in order to further their foothold in the area, reduced the cost of production and in an attempt to keep the Glanfadan population under control, started making slaves out of any Glanfadans captured during the uprisings. This resulted in a great increase in tension between the two groups. With the population of the area growing, an official governmental structure was established by the Ferconi. He appointed several earls to preside over the land and assigned them the thanes to help run their territories, and they called the new Griffram the Deerwood. Therefore, it remained the center for the Imperial Guard, but the settlement in Pearlwood Gulf, New Dunrid, was the true seat of power for the area. Sitting at the edge of the ocean, forest, fertile farmland, and a river that runs from the coast to the White March, Settlers flocked to the area, hoping to establish names for themselves. Adir began to spread across the new land. Blood and flecks of dried flesh and crust restraints. The tongue is warm to the touch. The glass vibrates with the bubbling fluid inside. Why are you the one to always open the doors? Oh, 
a woman could midstep across the room turns her head to face you long curls of black hair frame her face one side of which is flecked with some green liquid the gaze she sets upon you holds an eerie intensity more interruptions the woman sets down the book she holds smiling faintly what an interesting time we've been having of late so many uninvited guests i suppose i have you to thank for all the damage to my work it took time to those people but to get those people back on their feet you know Austria frowns. what is it you're doing here were those yours i prefer cats myself i have one of those as well Austria studies you Mom, mouth crooking upwards in a smooth smile you're one of Cole's little rebels, I take it. Come to fulfill his ambitions? Put an end to his departed allies? No matter. What concerns me is the curse upon Gilded Vale's people. I am on the cusp of a great discovery, and it is not Kosk's who undermines me, she eyes in. You might have chosen more powerful allies. What caused Wade Waden's legacy? It isn't the superstitions of Senile of my own old men, I can tell you that. <laughs> the legacy is an affliction of the soul, and I have dedicated my life, alongside my peers, to understand the fabric of souls, the essence of life. With any luck, she'll hang on the tree alongside her peers, too. Alf's voice is called. I consider myself the former student of Pan the Grand's fame theorems. It wasn't by chance that I was called here to assist in determining the true cause of this blight. This curse is not a parting gift from the scattered god, nor a punishment for petty sins. It must be localized effect, something which f strips the soul from a body, as the Biavax are known to do. Don't tell my town that, they might get real embarrassed about trying to have me hanged. I have detected, even so, lingering traces of essence upon the bodies of so-called Hollowborn. This suggests that the soul itself has not been wholly destroyed. It remains, I think, in intact somewhere, and so it can be retrieved, sutured, if you will, back into its mortal flesh. Why haven't you been able to find a cure yet? Osria's expression goes cold. It's that full priest Nedmar! The Perathian, she sneers. That old man has woven a tiny little tapestry of lies and fables. Lord Redrick is a pious man, and Nedmar holds power over him, especially now after this business with Ygrid. As if that whole-born child was my doing. In any case, my efforts are increasingly hobbled by ignorance. The priest has focused Lord Redrick's attention upon the ruins of the scattered god's temple. If it is consecrated anew, rededicated to Bera, then the curse will be lifted. <sighs> Osiel rolls her eyes. Hedrick believes him, of course. In any case, he has supplied a vast amount of gold towards the effort. You will know that I am bereft of such generous support. <laughs> she gestures to her lap with a sweep of her arm. I am left to scrounge for answers in these dismal conditions. Could I help somehow? Osria angles a curious look on her way. An interesting proposal. I certainly can't leave you threatening Lord Redrick's life. Hm. How would I continue my research if he were gone? She frowns. Still, perhaps we need not be enemies. If your true purpose is indeed, as Kosk's claims, to help kill the veil, then we are of one mind, and you may be of use to me. I stand at the very brink of revelation, but Nedmar's interference has gone too far. What do you want me to do? I want you to deal with the High Priest, of course. With him gone, Hedrick will have nobody to distract him. We can focus our efforts upon resolving this crisis, and we will have the resources to do so. Kill him, and in return I will give you the means to speak with Hedrick, a secret way by which you can avoid the guards. Osria smiles crookedly. They are not as patient as I, you see. Nor do they ask many questions before attacking. <laughs> she raises a finger. All this with the condition that you do not harm Lord Redrick. Alf speaks between his teeth. 
I do hope you're not considering a deal with her. I why not? Please tell me why not? I will deal with Nedmar and return here. Austria smiles warmly. Excellent. How much easier things might be if such enlightened and brave individuals were commonplace. There are stairs up to the kitchens in the northwest corner of the dungeons. Follow those up further and you will reach the Baratheon priest's quarters. You will find Nedmar there, within his chambers. The old man hardly relieves these days. I would not take up arms against the paladins unless absolutely necessary. Discretion would carry you further. He, of course, I'm not gonna steal from you. Isn't if it if it wasn't only me in there, I may have taken a different option into consideration. But as I was alone there. Oh, thank you. I'm getting rid, rid of one priest I don't think will prove to be deadly for us. I hope. Oh, who am I kidding? When I was a cleric, everything goes to shit when I was down. If I understand correctly, we are supposed to go one floor higher. But we were already here. Oh, unless he's in here. There are two rooms that we did not go through. It's no trouble. I love your <laughs> your confidence right before you failed. I don't see what I can do. Yeah, where can he be? Mm -mm 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 -mm. This one? No. Within the upper floors of the keep, I think this one. But... He could have given me a key, at least. Or maybe this is one floor lower. Oh my goodness. How m much more experience do we need for level up? A lot. A lot. And I don't have the key. No, oh, we. Oh, we have the trap with us. I think it leads outside. Yep, it definitely leads outside, and it's night already. Oh god. We'll see if we can attack the door. I know of at least two games that would allow that. Can we? I don't see what I can do. Hey, no. Difficulty eight. No, not this. It's really... 
I don't want to say that it's stupid that we cannot do that because we don't have enough mechanics. Can we redistribute your points by any means? No. Hmm. Okay, give me a moment. I will be right back. Okay, so I came back here in hope that we could talk with him, but apparently not. I'll have it in no time. Eesh. So apparently because our mechanics is so low, we cannot really... Uh, we can't really get to that priest, which is a bummer. Um, I guess we must level up significantly. Yeah, it's just a cell sword. Multiple of them. Mm, second wind. And wound binding. We're gonna heal in a little bit as well. I mean, use it. Some of you go there. The rest of you... Explosion. Okay, we will have to load up. Load up. <laughs> what to do? Go back down. <laughs> There's too many of them here. So, we must rest out for sure. And damage reduction. This story is harder than Tyranny. I'm here. I must admit that. Um, it's trickier, you know? So I guess we will have to kill her. Okay, you don't have to do that. At least they don't go into the traps. Nice and quiet. Certainly. Could you give me the key? I could use some rest. And you mean to do it here? <laughs> Ostrich glanced about the laboratory smirking. Very well, I suppose I can expect you to defeat a fry old man at anything else less than your full strength. Rest then, I'll ensure you wake with all your powers intact. No? Oh, it's interesting. But you really don't have. anything for us. Okay, so I think that I'm gonna end this part here, even though we've done nothing. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.